Welcome to Nursing School Explained in this video on one of the top 10 most commonly prescribed medications in the US, which is metoprolol. And medications ending in LOL or LOL are also referred to as beta blockers. They have antihypertension and antianginal properties. And so specifically metoprolol is indicated for hypertension and angina, as well as myocardial infarction prevention in patients that are high risk, but it also decreases mortality after a recent MI. So this is a medication that you will many times see a patient on that recently had a heart attack. Um, it also can be indicated or used for heart failure, and a completely different type of use where it also works is migraine prophylaxis. So then over here for action beta blockers, they block beta-1 adrenergic receptors. There is absolutely no effects on beta-2. Now not all beta blockers fall in this specific beta-1 and beta-2 category, so be sure to know whether your beta blocker that you're dealing with is cardioselective or non-cardioselective, and I'll link another video below so you can refer or refresh your memory about that. So um, most common side effects are weakness and fatigue. And of course, if we are lowering the heart rate, we might get bradycardia, but another side effect is also heart failure with pulmonary edema. Another big side effect is erectile dysfunction. So that's something that the um, provider might want to discuss with male patients. As for nursing considerations, as always with antihypertensive medications, we want to check heart rate, blood pressure, and EKG prior to the administration. And in the hospital setting, we want to check the apical pulse, and if the heart rate is less than 50, notify the healthcare provider. Most likely, will have to hold the medications. For IV administration, which mostly applies for the um, MI prevention and also the, the patient that just had that myocardial infarction. We want to check vital signs Q5 to 15. I would probably err on the side of caution and say Q5 minutes and double check the dosage um, with a second license to make sure because it can have such an immense effect on the patient's heart rate. And um, we want to make sure that we double check that with somebody else to make sure we're administering the right dose. We also want to check the patient for signs and symptoms of heart failure, so eyes and nose and daily weight. And one very important thing here is we want to instruct the patient to not abruptly discontinue the medications because um, that might cause life-threatening arrhythmias, hypertension, and or ischemia. So this is a very important tidbit to teach, teach our patients. So a lot of times they have to kind of be tapered off the medication if a change is indicated for whatever reason. For teaching, we want to teach our patients to self-assess their blood pressure and heart rate and know what to monitor um, for signs and symptoms of heart failure. We also want to caution them that the medication might cause some dizziness, drowsiness, so again, to change um, positions very slowly. For those that are diabetics type 2, we want to make sure that they check their blood glucose frequently, especially if they're just starting out on this medication, because beta blockers might cause hypoglycemia. So they want to, we want to notify them to keep a close eye on that. And then as always with patients that are at high risk for MI because of hypertension and possibly other risk factors, we want to encourage those good lifestyle measures which is weight loss and or exercise, decrease their stress level, decrease or eliminate alcohol intake, and to quit smoking to have an overall better lifestyle and take those nice non-pharmacological measures to help them. Thank you for watching this video. Also check out the other videos in the top 10 list and I'll see you soon right here on Nursing School Explained.